Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, of course, the Skyrender. And uh, yeah, today we're going against Terran in our first Lithio League battle. Uh, now, to have that said, really, um, this is the fourth for the season. I'm taking over a team for a guy named Dre. So, the team is not mine. Uh, while I have made some changes to it, it still is a bit too... Um, aggressively oriented for my taste. Now, I'll probably do the necessary changes as, as, as the season went on, but as of right now, I just made two big changes, and that was changing out Hexers and uh, Typhlosion for Stoutland and the NG. Uh, but that's about it. The bench Pokemon I have is Keldeo, hmm, Chansey actually, you, and um, what's more, I benched Mega Scissor because I was really scared of his Rotom and Vol Corona core that can definitely deal with Mega Scissor. Uh, and also knew that he probably was suspecting something like that, so having not being a sister here was basically to play with his mind a little bit, and I'll say the word this time, and we basically have a team here that is very very unconstructed, it basically is a team designed against his team, and I predicted the lives of Fairhorn and Sableye that he'd actually benched this time around, he has the Rotom, Thunderous, Togetic, Hitmonchan, of course Volcarona and Mega Dayanchi. Um, Mega Dianchi I did suspect being a part of this battle, um, whether or not I would use this or not, because Mega Dianchi is just a sort of powerhouse really, and I myself use of course Dianchi, but I'm using it more as a, especially defensively wall, uh, in conjunction with um, Sandstorm it really works well, and of course with Diamond Storm, that thing just gets all kinds of bulk, it's extremely dangerous, and I never saw that one coming uh, until I started the season, that that might actually work in my favor. Uh, other than that, I um, should probably talk about my team a little bit. I have a Scolipede, which is basically uh, an expert build set and um, having, of course, speed inbound. And uh, since I predicted Sableye, I didn't really want to fall for a simple taunt action. Um, so that's why I went for expert belt instead and only attacks on it. And then we have, of course, like I said, Dianchi, which is being pretty much an assault vested set. I was, I was thinking about doing that, but that is ended up going with the leftovers on it. Uh, he powered on a Scarf to Thunderous, which I did not EV train for this battle, and uh, yeah, that didn't matter as much really, but yeah, that's a thing to be <laughs> kind of aware of. Um, Stoutland, you know, the general set, uh, basically here, I hope that if I kill Dianchi, that nothing can stop it, and I can sweep through the team, because like I said, he has not a save this battle, so it he can do some work. And of course, Espeon, which basically is there to stop him from uh, throwing up hazards, so the only way I was really going to use this Espeon was to pretty much threaten him to not set up rocks or set up will waves or Thunder Waves or whatever he could go for. Uh, that was my general idea and um, I was really banking on that to uh, work for me. And basically here I did not know what I was going to start off with. I felt that Dianchi could be his lead to just get up to Mega Evolution fast since I don't have any Iron Hits on this team. So, I'm going to start off myself with Scolipede, because if that's the matchup, then I'm pretty sure he's going to set up Stealth Rocks. Uh, so, with all this, my guys. And, by the way, sorry about the long intro. I'll figure out something to make that thing quicker and more smoother. So, anyway, I did actually predict right here. Well, I do start with Benamax, which, of course, is naturally faster than on the NG. Like I said, I did suspect him to start off with that. Now, I were in a very fine position where I knew I can take a Diamond Storm from this guy. And uh, I was, like I said, basically banking on him not going for a Stealth Rocks due to me having Espeon and whatnot. But he just does that anyway, but I'm actually first off with hitting the Earthquake and what do you know? Crit City. So that was just like the appetizer of what this game really brings to the table. Now of course with the Earthquake I did think that he was probably not gonna sack this thing whatsoever. But um, I was basically free here to go for a Poison Jab if he decided to stay in. Now, he's gonna go to his blaze wall, and you know, that's fine, it really is. And um, Poison Jab will do a considerable amount of damage, but this is definitely a defensive set. And um, I was thinking about that, he probably is very likely to go for a Volt Switch instead of a Will O Wisp. Uh, so I was basically um, gambling it, and I, of course, get the poison, the 20% chances there after all. But he has the Citrus Berry, but that means that at least doesn't have. Um, Chester Resto, but he's gonna go for Volt Switch like I did suspect, and uh, I'm basically, basically, I did risk that going down, Scolopid is not really this important in this battle, he basically was here to do a significant amount of damage to the Pokemon that he thought would could be faster. Now, the Tornadoes is in here, and 
I was pretty sure what said it be, would be until he started with the bull cap. Then I was like, ah, ah, I see you, I see you, acrobatics and um, bull cap, resto chesto, uh, most certainly to be honest. So I was in really no position of going out of here. I could have gone for Dianchi, but at the same time, I don't see Dianchi taking this kind of pressure that well. So I am actually safer just keep going for rock slides and um, putting down in a position where I hopefully can take him out because I will outspeed no matter what and since I have expert belt I'm doing that little extra damage on it and here's the rest to Chesto situation we're talking about and uh, he is forced to attack me eventually and when he does I will outspeed and basically I'm gonna and I hate to say this but I was gambling on a flinch here that was really all I had in mind and um, basically here um, we gotta come in a position where I do score them. Actually, I'm I'm really really sh sad that I didn't have the bad and pass set here. To be honest, that would just been all kinds of terrible. But anyway, we're gonna score the flinch share, of course. And I was really like that was bullshit for my. To be honest, and I really felt Terran there that that was he had a key opportunity there to take this guy out, and uh, of course that <laughs> did not happen. And Scolipede is scoring the first kill of the battle. And um, generally turn, I'm sorry about that. And um, I basically decided here and that I might be better off, you know, it's been enough bullshit already, so I'm just gonna make my Scolipede go down there. I'm not gonna change it to hit one chan. And it's gonna go for the fire punch, and like I said, that's fine. Um, I basically decided to sack it because, like I said, I have no further use for it in this battle. Plus, I really felt bad about that situation that came to fruition. Um, so basically gonna go to the power on here, setting up, of course, the Sandstorm! And uh, I'm basically banking that he's gonna switch out to his Dianchi because he probably gonna think that I'm gonna set up Stealth Rocks, but I'm just gonna switch out to Tornadus. Uh, Tornadus is able to outspeed anything, and I have a Scorp set here because he's not faster than Dianchi. So um, basically my smartest bet was to come in a position where he thought he could outspeed and then take him out. And like I said, I'm not EV trained, so I was um, afterwards here. It's kind of surprising, but I guess I would speed with, um, I think, six points, so that's great and uh, all kinds of terrible, to be honest. But hey, uh, I did actually take him out, so that's awesome. And I'm basically gonna go to Stoutland here. I am sure now that I can't sweep through this team. I'm gonna at least win with a 5 0. So I was really, really feeling it here. Let's so go to this Togetic. I was thinking, okay, he could probably go for damage here, hoping to do something against me, but I should have this in the bag, right? Ugh, fucking reflect. And that was really bad too, because I was now in a position where I have to either hoping that Stoutland does enough damage in contrast, but he's gonna show me the wish here, and at this, as of this point I did think that he, it's very likely that he could switch into his Hitmonchan or um, his um, Rodan, but I was definitely feeling Hitmonchan. So I'm going to switch out, and there is no way in hell my return will do enough damage um, to the Pokemon's imbalance. I'm just going to go back to my Hippowdon. Now, this was a very, very bad call, because he was going to go to his Rotom, and like I said beforehand there, that I should probably see this one coming. Um, Rotom would not have liked the position against Southland, and I should definitely have just kept going for it. I just, I didn't, and as a direct result to that, I'm now put in a position where... I really can't hurt this guy, I just I can't. And I'm gonna go to my Danji because of the due to, I guess you'd say, the sandstorm, Danji can't really it thrives in this kind of environment. And it's just gonna Will Wisp, which I kinda didn't see coming. Uh, I was really hoping for a Thunder Wave or you know anything else, to be honest. But that's fine, that's fine. Um, I do get some special defensive boost here, and um, I can kinda deal with this. I'm just gonna go for a Diamond Storm here. I did that because I was feeling that Rotom um, could really not do a whole lot. I'm predicting he's gonna go for a Volt Switch, but that's about it. And um, a Diamond Diamond Storm should at least boost my defenses against um, um, against the Hitmonchan, and hopefully it doesn't pack the Bullet Punch. But he'll actually go to the Vol Corona, and this Diamond Storm is just all kinds of mean dusting for him. And puts him in, you know, around half his HP. And with buff with the Sandstorm, it's now down for the count. And um, I was I was forced to keep going for Diamond Storm. Um, I couldn't really um, overstate. I do have access to Psyshock and Moonblast, but I just I couldn't make that call. 
um, I can't really make this thing set up. Um, it basically is too. It actually, sort of, yeah, it's the reflect was still up too, so that explains why it did live. Um, wow, I totally forgot about that. So I'm gonna hit Mars, it's gonna come in there, and uh, like I said, there's sadly. I couldn't really over predict here, and uh, Hitmonchan is really taking this well. Uh, I do get the defense draw or defense boost, which is super, super important. And the Sandstorm, of course, subsides, and Hitmonchan is naturally faster, and I don't expect him to have Bullet Punch. I basically was risking it here, to be honest. And luckily for me, it did pay off. He has access to Drain Punch instead, and uh, it does a good chunk, but due to the defense drop or defense boost on my part, it's. Um, it's not gonna take me down, and I'm not risking. I, I probably I thought it could be assault vested in worst case scenario, so Moonblast would have been, well, a waste of time to be honest. So Psyshock was the better call to make. Now he will go to his Togetic here, and I thought that was strange. I was thinking that he could maybe been speeding vest, but I'm naturally out speeding here, and I'm just gonna go for Moonblast and. Um, I think he was hoping for that I would switch out or trying to preserve my points or anything like that and set up another reflect. I think that was what I was going for and I get it, I just, I didn't, I couldn't risk that to be honest and um, I just had to go for an attacking move and it did pay off this time of course. Uh, he's gonna go back to his Volcarona um, and this time I can't really do anything about it, I just have to accept my faith and take this fire dance, the energy did very very well this battle and it definitely definitely threatened the major threats in this scene uh, he doesn't get the attack draw or the attack boost this time so that's great really because that means I can bring my Stoutland uh, without really have to worry about him taking me out and the fire dance should not do enough damage like I said there and there is no way in hell that uh, Rona will outspeed so I'm basically just gonna finish this game with going for the returns and you know the Southland is feeling the burn but he's not gonna go down that easily and he's gonna come back with that return and there's definitely enough to take out to take out the Voltrona but he scores the flame body yes that did just happened I just I can't believe it I was so frustrated about this because that means that I can't take out the Rotom so I was basically forced here to switch out to my Espeon which is actually somewhat specially defensive uh, naturally not invested in that and uh, basically here he's gonna go for a Volt Switch, which get you know is fine. It's a safer move to make, of course, and uh, it does around 40%. So I knew that uh, a Call Mine would not. If I go for a Call Mine, then a Hydro Pump will definitely not be able to take me out, and I'll preserve my score with a 4-0. So that was the plan at least. And um, basically, like I said, setting up that Call Mine, getting that defenses going, and he of course gonna go for that Hydro Pump. And uh, yeah, crit. So yeah, that is awful. I think that's his second crit for the game, and uh, that's all kinds of terrible. So he scores a flame body, then scores a crit with a hydro pump, and I'm gonna go to Thunderous. And basically, I got, no, I got this in the bag. I was thinking I'm fully invested in special attack. I should definitely pull this off. But the ugly colors is gonna show themselves, and I'm basically like, oh right, he survives with one HP. And I can't believe it. And I'm gonna go to my Powdown. And um, yeah, this this is a beautiful ending to be honest. Because he will go to that, of course, the monster that is the Hydro Pump. And of course, hit that because why wouldn't you? And uh, we will end with a score of 2 0. So I can't believe I screwed the last part so much or too much over to be honest. This was a very, very hexy battle. And it ended up, of course, in my favor. But. Really now, I... oh... oh... <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I can probably talk for days about how even the Hex distributing was there. I think we both scored two crits, and I got the poison uh, jab um, thing going, and he got the flame body with his Volcarona, so I guess they were kind of evenly matched. But at the same time, you know, I won't deny that fact that my early game hacks matter more than his late game hacks. And I was kind of glad, at, or not glad, or rather annoyed by the feeling that I went for a 4-0 position to a 2-0 because, well, I didn't EV train my Thunderous, you know, that's my problem. But the Espeon, um, taking that crit higher pump, it did annoy me, <laughs> kind of, because I could just have gone for a side shock and I would have been, what was that? I did calculate afterwards and I was closer to 80% um, um, chance of Oko him from that, or KO him from that position. I just decided to play it safe and that came back to bite him in the ass, didn't it? 
But besides that, I really think it was a generally good game. I did not, I was not a big fan of those hacks. I just, I must be honest and say that Terran is much more, or I'm a very, very good player. So having stuff like that decisive for it is, it really sucks. Because that also makes sure that we really didn't face each other. The brawn was more about how to avoid being hacked out. And um, I won in this time, but I might as well not to. And to be honest, had I lost, I would have been super annoyed by that loss. And I know that Terran definitely is. And uh, he already, like me, had a three losses ratio at this time. So we both needed a win. Um, and uh, I really didn't like winning like this. I just, I didn't. Uh, but I really hope Terran comes through here at the end, or at the, well, it's still like eight games left, I believe, and um, it's rather close in um, the losses here, or rather you only need like one or two wins to be at the middle, so a lot of the best players are winning all the time, so that's good, that's good, that means that it's far from over, and uh, hopefully that will work. Um, but besides that, I want to of course thank you for watching guys, it, it means a lot at all, as always, you know that. Um, I hope we can continue this and I need to find some way of making this uh, end cards better. I know that people are doing like a pre-game set that people are watching for those who are interested. And I'll, I'll try to figure out something like that. And uh, besides that, the reason I haven't uploaded as much is, is because I'm really sick. Um, I'm getting better, but it's really annoying. My voice is all over the place and uh, yeah. I can't do too long a narration before I have to cough. Um, so that's the reason why, really. But, you know, we'll get him back there. Uh, so, anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching as always. Be sure to leave a like if you like this battle. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> and remember, the sky's the limit. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.